Okay, so before you go any further, there's one step that I forgot to mention, and that's to make a mask on the group. So go ahead and load GS1 as a selection and then mask the group to it, and then do the same thing with the GS2 and its group. And I really don't like the color red that I use in this, so I'm going to go ahead and fix it up real fast. Okay, that's looking much better. Okay, so basically I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the orange and yellow layers. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Okay, so assuming you've got a good mixture of red, orange, and yellow colors, let's go ahead and turn off our GS1 layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a texture. And if you don't have a grungy texture, you can probably just Google one. You know, they're all over the place. So when you find a good texture that you like, go ahead and drag it on into your document right here. And make sure it's actually in the group, not outside of it. And I'm going to change the size of this to fit just a little bit better and that's looking okay right there and I'm just gonna go ahead and change the blend mode to overlay and then bring up the levels panel and bring the blacks in just past the the curve right here and bring the whites in just a little past the curve right there and we'll do a little bit of before and after and maybe a little bit too bright and that looks pretty good to me so I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and then I'm just going to go ahead and do the same process with the blue. So I'm going to head over to blue and choose a slightly off color blue right here. Hit OK. And we're just going to go ahead and try out the same process with the blues. Make sure you leave some open spaces. All right, let's go. Okay, now that we've got our three different shades of blue on the second set of grungy bursts, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing that we did to the first set, which is turn off the GS2 layer, go ahead and grab another texture, I'm going to grab this one right here, oops, wrong one, click and drag it right there, let's go ahead and resize it. And it looks good right there, so we're going to go ahead and put it to overlay and change up the levels just a little bit and as soon as you've done all that you should be ready to put some color into Trexton's face to do that is actually pretty simple we're just gonna make a new layer on top of the black layer and we're actually gonna go ahead and group these together and use the black as a mask for group three and then with your new layer, let's just start calling it, let's just go ahead and call it color. And go ahead and grab a default brush. So we'll reset this real fast. And we'll make it pretty large so that it can cover the entirety of Trixon's face. And this is completely up to you what you do for coloring. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is use my lightest color of blue and fill in Trexon all the way. And then I'm going to go down a shade of blue, more towards what I was using for my uh, middle shade of blue earlier. And then just zoom out a little bit and just start painting around the sides of Trixon's head to give the ends of the hair and a little bit in the, the nose and the mouth and a little bit in the neck, some of that uh, darker blue color right there. And then go ahead and knock the the shade of blue down again 
and then put that shade of blue more towards the mouth and the front of the face and maybe a little bit more towards the hair and once you're proud of that go ahead and bring up yet another texture I'm actually gonna go back to this one right here I'm gonna click and drag it over here oops once again I went to the wrong tab and I'm gonna resize it like we have before but this time instead of putting it to overlay we're gonna go ahead and change the blend mode to linear light and then I'm gonna move this right about there looks fine and I'm gonna change up the levels just a little bit here and maybe not that much and that way we get the whites to pop out just a little bit more and one option that you can take if you wanna make this look a little bit more grungy is to go to the masks of the groups and then swap over to the dry media brushes and then this brush right here is actually very handy when it comes to making grunge uh, textures and whatnot or grungy edges you basically just have to go close to the edge click drag just a smudge and it will start making a grungy look to it but that's completely up to you. I'm actually not going to take the time to go ahead and do that in this tutorial. So you guys should have the general idea. If you guys feel like adding in the vignette that you saw in this demonstration right here, what you're going to want to do is go up and make a new layer. We're just going to call it Vin for Vignette. And we're going to fill it up with black. And I'm going to bring back my rulers and set them towards the center. And I'm going to bring out an elliptical marquee with a 100 pixel feather. I'm going to click and drag from the center. I'm going to make it about yay big. And I'm going to go ahead and mask the vignette and invert it. And I'm going to put down the opacity to about 80% or so. And you should be ready to go. But I'm just going to go ahead and delete this real fast. Delete the vignette. And there we go. Okay, so I'm hoping you guys were able to follow along with this tutorial pretty well. If not, then you know we'll be glad to help you guys out as much as we can. So if you have any requests or questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below or send us a message. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time.